Hey, plus good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be a preview for the Wheeling Nailers against their first in their Central Division rivals, the Toledo Walleye, who finished with the whopping 102 points in the regular season, the most points in the regular season, and second to the Reading Royals in regulation losses, under 20 at 19. So obviously, coming into this series, I don't think I have to specify who the favorite is for ECHL hockey fans and Kelly Cup playoff fans. Obviously, the Walleye were the biggest points getter in the league and the winner of that award. So they obviously are the favorites coming into this one. The Walleye and Nailers both had to get pushed to the brink, though, and go seven in the first round. So neither of them similar to... Uh, neither of them, unlike, I should say, the Rapid City Rush, who have extended rest in their series, and the Icemen, who have extended rest in their series for getting away of their or getting their series over with quicker in the first round. There's no luxury for either team in this one, as both went to a full seven. The Walleye with the Cyclones pushing them to the brink, and then it was obviously the Nailers that got to upset their division rival in the first round in the Fort Wayne Comets. The Wheeling Nailers came in and got a great upset win led by the great Cam Hosinger and company. The Wheeling Nailers were able to get that upset win as Hosinger uh, leads their team in points. Watling and Hude all have six. Uh, Almeida has four. Delwardy was pretty good. Garcia was good, obviously, as a latecomer in the regular season. Only played, I believe it was like 20 games, maybe 19 with their club. And has been good as a latecomer. We've seen a lot of guys that were the latecomers in the regular season that played the few games to 20 games that have actually been good in the playoffs for different teams. And that's kind of fun to see as well. Showing and proving just how great the domino effect of talent around hockey is really starting to come and, and develop at every level from double A up. But Chris Ortiz has obviously been really good. Uh, so has Maniscalco, but he's, I mean, obviously, I think from Josh Maniscalco, I mean, you could say the same for Chris Ortiz too, don't get me wrong, but from Josh Maniscalco now being over 60 games in his career, you really expect that Ortiz obviously is almost around that. Both of those guys are just consistent Eddie defensemen. This whole series, though, is going to really come down to if those guys can play great on the defense and Guidon can continue to play LPG, can continue to play fantabulous in net because he's going to need to have a stand on his head series. Who's a walleye, basically, are the Panthers of the ECHL. They're going to be able to put it to you. They're going to be able to defend you. They're going to be able to box you out. They're going to be able to jam you in the neutral zone. you got to figure out how to get those dirty but good goals. Have Maniscal, McPherson, Bafia, Smith, uh, Foley, uh, David Drake, who's a very good defensive defenseman, know that from his times here uh, with the Reading Royals, Chris Ortiz, all these guys are going to have to D up block shots, similar to kind of like the Nashville Predators or the Dallas Stars style of the NHL and really block out for the goaltender because I don't see them getting the wins on a lot of the shot count short, but obviously you, if you can just generate a few great chances for yourself and block out the netminder um, and Billy Christopoulos, you're going to be able to have very good chances. It's just all about getting those dirty but good goals. If you're the Wheeling Nailers, that's the only chance I really see them having in this series because obviously Christopoulos is one of the best ECHL guys in cage, an ECHL veteran that has been very good since coming to the ECHL year in and year out. So this this is going to be a goaltender matchup between him and Goydon, but obviously the the just ridiculous talent in front of Christopoulos uh, well outweighs that of the Wheeling Nailers who are still building up their team. And the, the Walleye are just, well, a spade a spade. They're an absolutely stacked team with Hensick, Hawkins, uh, Albert, uh, Barry, uh, Boeing, McKenzie, uh, Hurd even as well, who didn't have a good first series. Uh, Curry, the newcomer, who didn't have the best first series. But like all these guys, Dickinson, um like, if you can have, obviously, Keenan, who also filled out his role fine, but, like, if all these guys even pick it up more when you've had also already the great play of your core guys, well, I mean, the Walleye, I think, are expected to be in the Kelly Cup for a reason, and I don't see them losing this first-round series. Christopoulos is going to be great in cage. Gazzola, Meyer, Clark, uh, Murdernet, Fraser, uh, Gafari, Loney, uh, you would think, uh, all of their defensemen, except for Gafari, because he only played the one game, but all those guys would be really sharp behind 
well, in front, I should say, of Christopoulos. And that's what it's been all season. The Wildlife are one of the best well-run machine teams. They're like the Panthers or Avalanche in the NHL, ECHL version. They're a very run club, very well-run strategic club. And um, th- they obviously are a team that I foresee winning this series. But obviously, I think I would have foresaw, I didn't get to do with timing series uh, previews for the first round, but I would have foresaw the Comets also beating the Wheeling Nailers. So... Uh, and Grabber's team, the MVP, of course, being the Comets. But that did not happen. So obviously things you foresee, it doesn't always come to fruition. So far, I've been pretty good at predicting the three gamers in the ECHL. We'll see how I do with the second round. Or in the AHL, I should say. We'll see how I do with the second round of the ECHL. But I'm taking the Toledo Walleye in this series for sure. I do think it'll get pushed to at least five games. Though I do think the Wheeling Nailers have been playing great hockey and are going to at least get a win in this because of Goydon, because of Cam Hosinger, Watling, and Hude being able to find a way to will and a way get a win. So I do see them getting a win in this, but I definitely see the Toledo Walleye taking the series in the end. Please continue to subscribe down below, up above on the Easy Dues widget to keep our channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. Thanks, everybody, and have a safe day, and enjoy the hockey.